After 27 long years, Egypt has finally returned to the World Cup. And, criminally so, this is only Egypt's third World Cup, or, what, or at least what will be the third World Cup ever. With only two prior appearances coming in 1934 and 1990. Egypt became the very first African country to premiere in a World Cup way back in the second edition and the first African country to score a goal in the World Cup. We only played a couple of games in that tournament because the bracket of that 1934 World Cup was sort of a um, NCAA single knockout round style. And then in 1990, we were in a group with the Netherlands, England, and Ireland, and we finished bottom with two points from two draws after playing some less than enthusiastic anti-football. But since then, four African Cup of Nations, three of which were in a row, and we still could not get back to the World Cup until now this current generation of players, by no means in the same conversation as those championship winning sides, but their names will forever go down in history as only the third Egyptian national team to make it to the main stage. The team flew out earlier this morning, and I believe now they have arrived in Russia. So it is happening. It is surreal. And it's incredible, to be honest. So Egypt finished top of their group in 2018 World Cup qualifying with 13 points, four wins, one draw, one loss, eight goals scored, and four conceded. And the one man who was a huge part in every single goal that was scored, whether scoring it directly or through an assist or part of the link-up play leading up to the goal, is none other than the Liverpool star Mohamed Salah. So. For the first time in a long time, Egypt is sort of a one-man wrecking ball. Which is unusual for us because we're used to having an actual team. And we made it to this World Cup in the most dramatic way possible. In a stoppage time penalty in the last home game against the Republic of Congo. After Congo had equalized in the 87th minute. Mohamed Salah placed it comfortably in the back of the net to send the stadium into raptures, and the rest is history. So heading into Russia 2018, you know, speaking about this both as a, as a personal fan and trying to be as neutral as possible as an analyzer, this is not the best Egyptian team in quite some time. But... We're hopeful because Egypt have been drawn into a group containing Russia, Saudi Arabia, and Uruguay. Not an easy group, but by far nothing, you know, compared to what could have been less palatable. A second place finish in this group is not out of the question, although since Mohamed Salah is injured and he may or may not play the full 90 minutes of all three games in this group, and if he does play, there will be a scare of whether or not he will re-injure himself or exacerbate his current lesion. The rest of the team will really need to step up as far as goal-scoring threat is concerned because Egypt, under the current manager, Hector, Hector Cooper, we play a very ultra-defensive brand of football. We don't really have many goal-scoring options outside of Mohamed Salah. I mean, we have Trezeguet, we have... Uh, Abdallah Saeed, though he's more of a midfielder. Uh, Marwan Moshen, Amar Warda, but Mohamed Salah is very much the main guy, and his injury is an enormous blow should it affect his performance in Russia and limit him. Egypt also has not won a single match in 2018. We had two draws 1-1 with Kuwait, 0-0 versus Colombia, a 3-0 loss to Belgium a couple of days ago, 1-0 loss to Greece, a 2-1 come-from-behind defeat to Portugal. We're not doing so well. 
Whereas our group opponents, they've won at least once in the the international friendly window between qualification and the World Cup. And if there's ever a time to start winning, it's now because we're likely going to need at least four points from this group to have a chance to come through. Playing the host nation, Russia, who has the, pres the pressure of a host uh, to come through this group. Also, a Uruguayan team that is very good, I think, is going to go very far this summer. And we're underdogs. To some extent, I would say Saudi Arabia even has improved lately, whereas we seem stagnant and not particularly a big fan of Hector Cooper, the way he has our team set up, because it's designed to be ultra defensive while pressing on the counter and feeding long balls to Saeed and Salah. And this one thing that Egypt is supposed to be compensating for, for, for what they lack up front, sans Salah, it's not really working because we're conceding goals. We're, we were trounced by Belgium. We lost pretty much every game this friendly season except to Kuwait and Colombia. So I don't have very high hopes for us this summer, but the goal for us in Russia 2018 was just to get to Russia 2018. So now we want to put in a, a respectable performance, hopefully not get blown out in all three of our games. Uh, and then maybe we can do something because of the group being as navigable as it is. Now then, some positives that don't include Mohamed Salah is one of our best defenders, I think the best, Ahmed Hagazi. He plays for West Brom, which I'll be on. Um, he's very good in the air. He can win headers in the aerial position for clearances for the Egyptian back line. He's going to be, if not Mohamed Salah, he's, good, he's probably going to be our most important player for this entire tournament. If we're going to have any chance to, to pull off a clean sheet or to come through on goal difference. If it comes down to the wire where Egypt is starved for goal scoring creativity, then our back line will most certainly have to hold. Ahmed Hagazi is the guy. He was one of our best performing players in that friendly against Portugal. Uh, another key player, Ahmed Fati. Uh, he plays for Al Ali in Egypt. He's the vice captain. Most of the time, he's either vice captain or, or captain of the team, depending on the occasion. Another defender of ours, he will really need to step it up as well. Problem is, he's kind of getting up there. He's 33, but he links up with Hagazi in the back line, and they're going to have to hold in this tournament, especially in that opener against Uruguay. Now then, a cool fact. One of our goalkeepers, Esam El Hadri, he's going to be 45 years old. He will be the oldest player ever at the World Cup. He was, he's one of the last remaining vestiges of our three-in-a-row championship uh, African titles from 2006 and 2010. He was with that group going way back, and he's the veteran of this squad. He will finally be playing in a World Cup. You know, El Hadri, he's famous for his celebrations when he dances on top of the goal. He is finally going to be playing in a tournament that he's been trying to get at for his entire life. And I'm so happy for him. And he still has a lot left in the tank. He was very crucial for us in the African Cup of Nations just a year ago in 2017. Egypt managed to keep clean sheets uh, until the semifinal against Burkina Faso. So I think he still has a lot to offer. I don't think his age is going to be a problem. So those are a few positives that I mentioned about Egypt in light of all those things going against us. But more so, this is just a team that people are happy to finally see back at the World Cup. Um, football likes to throw in some really sad yet beautiful ironies uh, at the end of the day because it's not our best squad uh, by a long shot. I do question several of the tactics of our manager, Hector Cooper, but just getting back to here is a victory in itself, and it's, it's just it's so sweet. It's finally. You know, I personally, I will get to see Egypt for the first time in my lifetime at a World Cup, and nothing is better than that.